Hello, and welcome to the Fear Channel, a channel with regular broadcasts telling the most chilling of urban legends, ghost stories, and forays into the darkest corners of the human mind. Those faint of heart or prone to night terrors should proceed at their own risk. Tonight's story is Dancing Mania. Many know of the deadly bubonic plague that wiped out a large portion of the European population during the mid-1300s, but few are aware of an even stranger plague that took place roughly 30 years later. Dancing Mania, or Quaria Mania, is a disease that struck unsuspecting towns throughout the Middle Ages and continued right up to the middle of the 20th century. It was an illness where people would begin to dance uncontrollably, and wouldn't be able to stop. They would dance for days on end until they literally danced themselves to death. The disease afflicted the young and old alike. Once a person began dancing, the only way it would end would be for the person to have a heart attack, stroke, or to simply die from exhaustion. While potential cases of dancing mania were loosely recorded as early as the 600s, these cases were poorly documented and there is little mention of actual death by dancing. The first cases of death caused directly by dancing mania broke out in 1374, along the Rhine River in Germany. The city of Aachen was the first to experience the phenomenon. While these early cases would only infect a few members in a town or city before dying down, the symptoms were much more severe. During these early outbreaks, the inflicted reported seeing vivid hallucinations, and in later stages would scream uncontrollably, fall to the ground in epileptic fits, and begin foaming at the mouth. These early cases did have some survivors, as the people of Germany were able to cure some of the afflicted before they died. In order to stop people from dancing themselves to death, they would forcibly grab them, and bound their bodies in tight linen cloths. Those who survived told stories of what they saw, and the hallucinations were rather disturbing. They would see strange spirits floating about, who would call out their names. They would also see rivers of blood, and claim that the reason they were jumping so high during the dancing was to avoid falling into the flowing blood rivers. Others saw wondrous biblical events, like watching the skies open to images of the Virgin Mary. The disease eventually spread southward to other countries in southern Europe. Throughout the 1400s, the disease was often referred to as St. Vetus's Dance, since St. Vetus was the patron saint of dancers, and he was often invoked during outbreaks to heal the sick. The disease reached a peak during 1518 in Strasbourg, Alsace, a city which is now part of France, but at the time was part of the Holy Roman Empire. The outbreak began with a Mrs. Trophea, who began dancing in the streets. She danced for almost a week before collapsing. During her dance, 34 others joined her. The members of Strasbourg were not as successful at treating the disease as those in Aachen. They presumed that those afflicted would do better if given the opportunity to dance the sickness out of them. As a result, the sick were given special spaces in the town center and other deliberated buildings. Eventually, a stage was erected so that people could spectate the dancers. This glorification of the dancing only caused more people to join in and become sick themselves. The nobles in the town were quite dismayed and eventually hired physicians to make assessments. Since the best solution they could come up with was bloodletting, they were of little use. By the time the sickness had abated, roughly 400 people had taken to dancing, and many of them had died. Other less severe cases of dancing mania were reported as late as the 1700s, but after this time dancing mania seemed to vanish without a trace. It would seem that earlier cases of the disease were less contagious, but often proved to be fatal. Later cases would be more infectious, but far less likely to kill the sick. Modern experts have suggested that the most plausible cause for this strange disease is psychological in origin, and most likely a form of mass hysteria. 
Others have speculated that dancing mania was never a sickness at all, but rather a stage ritual carried out by cult members made to look like a contagious illness. Paracelsus, a well-known German scholar of medicine during the Middle Ages, commented on the nature of the disease, and said that its cause was due to sensual impressions impacting the emotions in a way that caused them to overpower the oppositional force that reason has over such outbursts. He also noted that the disease broke out far less frequently during his time, the early 1500s, than it did during the time of his forefathers. Tarantellism is a disease that plagued Italy and nearby regions until as late as the mid-20th century. People assumed it was caused by being bitten by a tarantula or scorpion, but this proved to be just a superstition. Similar to dancing mania, the inflicted would be restless and want to move around. The main difference being that dancing would eventually restore the person to health. Those who contracted the illness would have a blackened discoloration in the skin on their hands and face. After dancing for some time, their vitality would return and their appearance would go back to normal as well. After a few outbreaks, it was discovered that playing music for those dancing greatly increased their chances of recovering. This disease is the origin of the dance known as the Tarantella. The last known outbreak occurred in 1959. It is hard to imagine in modern times succumbing to such a strange illness. Perhaps the excessive need to dance was a byproduct of the heavy levels of social repression experienced during this era. Where this strange malady originated, and why it disappeared is lost to the annals of time. Perhaps its essence is best captured in the following 17th century poem. Amidst our people here has come the madness of the dance. In every town there now are some who fall upon a trance. It drives them ever night and day, they scarcely stop for breath, till some have dropped along the way, and some are met by death.